Hey, what's up guys? Um, today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to bake animations into an FBX without the use of a rig, and then from there bring those animations into an, a game engine like Unity, or bring them back into Maya uh, for later use. But the benefit of this is that we can take defor uh, deformers like a, like a bend or a lattice deformer and actually take those, bake it into the mesh, and then export it. And the reason why I'm doing a tutorial in the first place is because FBX format does not support um, deformation based animation right off the bat. You have to do some tricky stuff and in our case we're going to be using blend shapes because blend shapes is actually something that FBX format does support. Um, so to kind of show you what I was trying to achieve here, we have a basic coin flip uh, or you can kind of use your imagination. It's a coin flipping and this is just basic translation animation. This is rotation, scale, and um, transform. What is it? Translation, sorry. Um, and that that is supported through uh, FBX as well, as well as like rigs are. But this was an attempt to actually bake out a deformation-based animation using a bend deformer, and this is the amazing result I got. It's nothing. So we're gonna teach you guys how to use a deformer, bring it into Unity or like I said Maya, and actually bake it in and use it without the use of a rig. So that can be sometimes way too kind time-consuming for something as simple as a uh, like a cube prop or a chest or something like that. So let's get going on this. So right here, I have a cube with a bend deformer placed on it. Um, just to show you it's working and stuff, I have the curvature, I can change it. Cool. So um, normally how you go about doing this and animating a deformer would be to key things out. Um, and let's go ahead and actually apply a curvature to this. We'll bend it a little bit this way, come this way. Same thing. Let's watch the animation. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, but we can't bake that out and actually use it because again, FBX doesn't support that. So we're going to achieve the exact same effect, nothing different, but just a little bit of a longer process to make sure it bakes properly. So, um, got to make sure I click on my bend node and delete it. Okay, so there's that. Set this back to zero really quick. So, that being said, um, we're going to come back into here and we're going to first set the curvature. Uh, well, we're going we're gonna to set our extremes, all right? And we're going to set up our shapes for our blend shapes node. So, we're going to go ahead and grab curvature, and we're going to bend it a lot this way. We'll say like 40 degrees looks good. Cool. Alright, so take this and duplicate it, and we're going to go ahead and call this one uh, right bend. Um, we want to keep track of this stuff because blend shapes um, actually feed in the name of objects into their controls, so that way we can kind of know what's going on with it. And then, we want to go ahead and do the exact same thing except flipped on this one. So, we'll do negative 40, um, just to keep things symmetrical. So, again, we're going to grab this pull it out and duplicate it, and then we're going to come back, grab the bend, set it to zero. So we have our base object, um, call it base cube, that's right bend, and this is going to be left bend. So this is what we're going to use to drive our, um, so these shapes are going to drive the blend shape, and then from there the, the blend shape is going to drive the overall form and shape of the base cube, or whatever your main prop is. Um, it's worth noting that you can't change the, vert uh, the vertice amount on any form of a blend shape, or else it won't work. Um, so the vertices have to be identical with each other, same amount of faces, same amount of triangles, that sort of thing. So it's only like deformation uh, and changes in the actual form was what's going to work. So to do a blend shape, super simple stuff, you're going to grab your shapes, what would drive the blend shape? It could be two or more, but it always has to be two, I think. Um, could be just one, but either way. Select it, uh, the two shapes, or the three shapes, and then come in here, grab your base shape, and then you're going to go up to deform, blend shape. Um, you can hit the option box if you want. This is normally automatic. This just sorts the deformation order. Nothing too crazy. Um, and you can also just reset it too if you want, but that's a default setting. So just use the default, hit create, and kaboom, you have a blend shape. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the bend, the bend deformer, um, just to show you this actually works. So the bend deformer is now gone. Um, and we can use the blend shape now to essentially drive our the shape of our animation or the shape of our object. This is the left bend. Excuse me. This is the right bend. So now, that being used, we're going to come back in here and we're going to key this out and do another animation one more time. Um, and Except this time it's going to work. So with our blend shape selected, we're going to key it. Um, we're going to come back over to 30, key that out, so it creates a nice loop. And then we're going to go over to left bend, we're going to make it bend left first. We're going to come over to 20, and then turn that down to 0, and come to right bend, make that bend. So, just to show you, cool, loops. Alright, 
so this is where um, things get pretty important here. So in order to actually bake out a blend shape, um, it's important what you actually select. So just simply selecting this is not going to cut it. You need to actually select the node itself inside of your input, um, inside of your channel box. Um, you need to select the blend shape input. Um, and again, this is important because you're baking the, you're going to bake the keys. Uh, so the, so you're going to bake the simulation or the animation from uh, the inputs from the actual node itself. And you can do this one of two ways. Again, you can select this on the inputs, or you can go to um, Windows General Editors, um, Hypergraph Connections, and with the object selected, we have obviously this object right here. Let me make this a bit bigger. But right around here, you're going to see something called blend shape. So this blend shape is going to match up with the blend shape out here. So if you notice when we select this and we select blend shape, that highlights. Because these nodes are the exact same. They're just displayed differently. So you can either use this or you can go in here and select it. I'm just going to use this in here because it's easier. Um, so with input selected, you're going to go to edit, keys, and then bake simulation. And reset the settings. And this is default. You can use default in our case. Um, usually when you're using a rig... Uh, if you select one joint, like the pelvis, uh, which is like, the, I guess, the top joint or the root joint, you want to hit below because it, basically everything that, um, like all the children of the parent rig, or the, the base, the very top of the hierarchy, which is, again, the pelvis or the root bone, when you select that, everything with that joint selected and below it gets baked into the bones. Now, it just selected, whatever you have selected gets baked, and that's it. Um, and, but in our case... Um, since all we're baking is just one selected object, and more particularly one selected node, we can just use whatever selected. So with, again, with the blend shape input node selected, and under edit, uh, keys bake simulation, we can just go ahead and bake it with default settings. So now, every single key gets baked out. Um, there's no more interpolation, it's just hard, uh, it's just hard key frames. And now we can use this to export out into our game engines and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and come to file, uh, export selection. Oh, one, one other thing worth noting, too. Um... You can't clear the history because it's going to break the connection between the actual um, between the actual shapes of the blend shape. So instead, we're just going to come up to here, do edit, delete by type, non-deformer history because that cleans up the shape as best as we can. But we still need this blend shape node um, because it's actually applying deformation to our actual mesh. So that being said, again, come back up here and go to File, Export Selection. And we're going to use the FBX format because that's what saves it. Let's we'll call this um, Ben Bake 2. And there are three very important things you need to have, uh, or maybe it's four important things you need to have selected. This could be default, but you need to have animation selected. Um, we don't need to bake the animation because we actually just baked the, the, the simulation. I haven't tested it with big uh, animation, but I have a feeling it'll be different because it tends to just bake the object you have selected and not necessarily the input, uh, the input nodes. And again, what's so important here is using the selection of the input nodes. <laughs> Um, so if you come down to deform models, this is your second huge category. Um, by default, I think these are unchecked. So when you check deform models, it'll open up skins and blend shapes. Blend shapes absolutely has to be uh, selected since obviously we're using blend shapes. And then I think there are skins involved, but we can always do that just to make sure. Um, and then the last one that actually just screwed me up, the last tutorial I tried to make on this, is the input connections. We are having inputs from these uh, these drivers, which are actually driving the shape of the blend shape. So we have to make sure that input connections is selected. Um, everything else can be default, however skill factor you want it to be. It could be that. And then from there, um, you're good to go, and you can actually just export it. So it exports out cleanly. Um, and just to preview the, to you that it actually works, I have a blank Ma uh, Maya pulled up here. So now we should be able to just grab this FBX, drag it right in, and it should be able to play. And lo and behold, it does. So that's the first test you should be able to do on a particular object. If it can be imported into Maya and the, and the keyframes can be read, it should be able, in theory, to be brought into a game engine um, and be read that way too. So we'll pull Unity on screen here really quick. Um, head into Assets and grab BenBig2. Drop it in here, import it, and we'll grab the take. We'll play it. And look at that. It's working. And all we did... We, this is the exact same animation I'm trying to achieve with just deformers, but I just took it a step farther and used blend shapes to drive it because FBXs, again, will actually take um, blend shapes and bake them in there. So that was my simple little tutorial. Um, it definitely was a huge leg up for me since I was actually able to dodge rigging in certain situations because it's not always necessary to rig stuff. Um, and deformers can achieve some quite nice things too. So that's how you take an object uh, in Maya, bake a deformer into it, export that FBX with the baked animation without using a rig. Thank you.